Welcome and thanks for tuning in. I'm Hanna and this time we go for the illusion of details and how to create soft and shiny plumage on a bird. I listed the supplies I used in the description below. For the eye I started out with very sharp pastel pencils, but because it's so small I later on just used colored pencil to finish up the details. For this drawing I chose a sand colored pastel matte paper, just to achieve an overall color harmony. The first thing I do is I create a little bit of the background around the subject, so that I can overlay the subject itself later on. For once it helps me to establish the colors of the subject and the values better, and also it avoids that I have a halo effect around the subject. This way I can overlap the subject later on with the surrounding background. To create this beautiful bluish black he has on his top and on his wings, I used an underpainting indigo and then worked with black on top. And later on I put the highlights in in different shades of blue. This makes the feathers look slick and really shiny and smooth. In each layer I put on, I like to smooth out the lines a little bit, but I never eradicate them completely. For layers, this will give you the depth and softness you need. With a small subject like this, feathers and fur are not that different from each other. Now I'm creating a base color map by putting down the base layer and the colors. I always work in the direction of the feathers. I, I like to apply the colors with the soft tool applicator, this spongy little thing. And to smooth it out, I use either my finger or the small paper stumps. They're really good for these really small areas on the bird. When you put down the base layer of the color, make sure you follow the directions of the feathers on the bird. Really watch your reference photo for this. Also make sure that you have a bit of a variation in your strokes, like the length and the width of the feathers. I love to use black in my work, but I usually tint it with other colors. In this case, with a lot of different blues. Here, because it's such a small area, I put black directly on the red color. I usually wouldn't do that because you have to be really, really careful with that. Black is not a good color for shading, actually, because it will dirty your color the moment you smudge it, and it's nothing you can repair. On a bigger red area, I would usually start with a base shading in a very dark red or in a dark magenta or purple color. That would look more natural and then I would finish up with a bit of black. If you want to achieve the look of very soft and fluffy feathers, don't try to Draw every single feather, just go with the clumps, clumps and clusters of, of feathers. What I draw in here now are actually the shadow forms of these clumps. In the next layer I will go on top with a lighter tone and I switch in between darker and lighter till I get the depth of detail I want. That's how you create the illusion of details without actually have to, having to draw them. When I need a really deep black and a really brilliant white, I reach for my Caran d'Ache pencils. I only have two because they are so freaking expensive, but to be fair, these two pencils are game changers. I love the opacity and the pigment situation. If you only want to have two, a few of these pencils, black and white are really necessary in my opinion.
In the ring itself, you can't see a ton of details, but don't be tempted to make these areas just black. This will look unnatural, flat, like a black hole. For this wing I used an underpainting in indigo blue with a bit of a bluish grey on top. And then I used for the feathery clumps a bit of black pastel. I think it's essential that you learn to mix your colors, that you will have the exact color you want or need in your repertoire of pencils is not a given. No matter how many pencil sets you've got, you will never have the exact color for everything. Here I tinted my bright red with orange to achieve the glow I wanted. I didn't have the perfect match in my sets. So you have to learn to mix. Play with your colors, take a sheet of paper and just play with them and look what comes about. That's one of the reasons why I will never give you the exact colors I used. You have to learn to see them for yourself. There's no way around. Now I start putting in the clumps of feathers on his body following the given direction of the feathers. If you feel overwhelmed by the amount of details you see in your photograph, then squint your eyes or blur out your picture. This makes it much easier to see clumps of feathers, not single feathers. One of the last steps on the drawing is to overlap the dark and light areas on his body and also to overlap the bird a bit with background to give the whole drawing a homogeneous look. Also cleaning up the edges and finalizing a few areas with a colored pencil where the pastel pencil just were too broad, not fine enough. And if you want to see how I drew this bokeh background and the realistic snowflakes, that's the topic for the next video. So, and that's it again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you care for prints or merch from my Red Bubble shop, the link is in the description. And don't forget to do all the YouTube things and help me grow. It's very appreciated. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.